This is so cool, you guys. So look, fiberglass mesh. Seems a little bit of a big hole compared to what it looks like on her picture, but I think we're going to be... Oh, no, you know why? Because Kiwi's with me. She um, was peeping. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to take like this much and it's adhesive -y, and just lay it and move it around and we're going to stencil and it says, uh, let's see, lightly, da -da -da -da, place a piece of adhesive mesh tape over the jumper and randomly stencil some light texture onto the jumper. Place the stitching on the belt with, yeah, but she's not telling me what. Oh, oh. Mix some celery green and avocado paint. Okay, so celery green. Celery green is a little bit, oh, I have avocado. Celery green is, why can't I find, right here. It's a little bit of a lighter green. So it tells me to mix. And you can use a palette knife to mix with. I generally just use a brush. Like, I'm not, very um I don't listen to the what they tell you to do <laughs> so I'm just gonna take let's see I'll take the round brush and I'm just gonna pick up this avocado that's already on my palette okay we don't get feathers and put some there and then I'm gonna put a little bit of the celery right there and mix it and a little bit of water don't forget the water and then this is the color that I'm going to use to stencil through that uh, tape. But I'm going to rinse off my brush. Rinse it off. Now, to stencil, you generally want to use a stiff brush or a sponge. I think I'm going to use one of these. This is like a stippling brush. But it's kind of small. I think I'll be able to do it. And you also don't want it very wet. So I'm thinking I'm going to use this. So I'm just st st just pouncing. I just loaded the tips. And let's see what that looks like. Ooh, it's actually adhesived. And just I'm just going to make sure that I have the... Uh, it's going in the right direction. And I'm just going to put... Let's see what this comes out like. Ready? It worked. I don't know if you can see it, but it worked. Mm, it's not super dark, but I think it's just supposed to be subtle. And you don't have to put it everywhere. But this is so cool. Oh, it really shows up on the um, highlighted area. Doesn't it, Kiwi? Ooh. So, like, I'm just going on top of everything, and I'll take it off if I... Like, I got it on the belt. Mm. So I'm just going to go across the belt and take it off. And then there's a B there. I'm going to, I'll go over the B again, um, but yeah, cool, man, I like this as a stencil, what the heck, people are so smart, I am, t oh, I need to reload my brush, people are so stinking smart, man, they are smarty pantses, look how cute, can you see that, oh, adorable, I love it. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush, set that aside. I think that's good. So that was board seam tape, cute. Um, and then it says to paint the stitching lines on the belt. Okay, so it seems like I finished the whole jumper. Yeah, I think I did. Okay, so now we're moving on to the legs and the boots. Yeah, boots and pants and boots and pants. You know what I didn't do? Is that little highlight of white on the uh, buttons. So I just have my liner brush and I'm just going to go boop, boop. 
tiny little highlight. All right, so let's go move on to our boots and pants. Boots and pants and boots and pants. Maybe that's where the, no, it's, this is legs and boots. All right, base the legs with light buttermilk. Highlight down the left side of, of the left leg and down the left side of the right leg with titanium white. Shade down the right side of the left leg and the right side of the uh, left, whatever, with sable brown. So I need sable brown. And then it says shade the legs under the jumper. So here and at the top of the boots with sable brown. Okay, and then we baste the boots with wild orchid and then we're gonna highlight and shade those. Deepen the shading, baste the bands around the ankles with celery green. Maybe I'll put, oh, I did that already, yay. And then the little buckle. Okay, cool. Sable brown, right? Is that what it said? Why can I never find these thinking? Here it is. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. Mm, I could touch this up and you know what? I want to erase my um, line here. Just get it really as light as it can go. And like, I don't love, I think I got some green on here, but we're going to shade it. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, all right, I'm going to get my, I just want my little, my little angle brush because I get too cray cray with um, my big angle brush. <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole thing. Well, I probably will. I could come back and do it. Uh, but this is because it's very time consuming, but um, it's going to be exciting. All right, so sable brown, and we're going to highlight with what? Titanium white. Need a little bit more because I used it to mix. Oopsie. Okay. So highlight. <laughs> the left side of the left leg and the left side of the right leg. I guess this would be his left leg and my, it's my right, whatever. I'm just following the picture. But I, I mean, that's super, super subtle. Probably because the base coat was a different color than she had. It's not really showing up. Maybe after I highlight, I mean, I shade, I can um, come back. So let's see, shade the legs. Okay, base the boots. Highlight the boots with a brush mix of titanium white and a little bit of wild orchid. And I think the pansy lavender, yes. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a brush mix of this with the white for the highlight color on the boots. And this is what I mean by skipping around. So while that's drying, I'm just gonna make a brush mix right here. And I'll use this to highlight the boots. So she's got it at the cuff right here. Oh gosh. So you know why? Because I didn't rinse my brush. Oh boy. I am such a heavy hand. And I know you think it looks fine and I think it looks fine too, but that's a lot of paint. It's a lot of paint. It's a lot, a lot, a lot. So I'll try to soften it. That's because I brush mixed it with this brush too. Okay, that looks fine. And then there's a lot of little wrinklies in the um, in the shoes, which I'm just using the picture as a reference. It's like right here, she's got it, the tip of the toes, the little tip of the toes. And then where else? Like right here, there's a wrinkle. And that was really dark. It's because I, I do need to reload my brush. Because this is, I can see a wad of white there because this is what I brush mixed with. But it looks good, so I'm just going to rinse and I'll reload right back where I kind of brush mixed. And hopefully there's enough paint on my palette. And come over here and make another little bumpy right here. Oh yeah, there was plenty of paint. You see that? 
a little wrinkle. And I'm very chippy choppy today, but that's okay. And then there's another little wrinkle here. And here. I stuck my hand in paint. Um, we can go back up to the legs and the sable brown. And I will do that. Because we have to, did I ever put any sable brown out? No. Kiwi has been, I have a bird, she's a, um, a green cheek conure. Come here, let me show everybody you. Don't poop. Kiwi, what are you doing? Look up here. Kiwi, Kiwi. Anyway, she's been so happy, and I've given her baths a couple times. She's take, taken her right in the shower with me and taken a bath, and um, she's just, I think it's because it's spring, like she's a little bit molting. She's getting new feathers, and it's just so, she's so sweet. She's just preening herself on my shoulder, right? You're a good girl, okay. Our pets make us get everything. My pets make me, oh you got a feather in your mouth, see? Yeah, she keeps like coming out with feathers, like she's just cleaning her feathers, but then one will end up in her mouth because they're falling out, because they always fall out in the spring. I think a couple times a year. So that looks kind of pretty. My brush is real wet, so I'm just going to blot again and go down here above the boot. My brush is real wet, mm, but that looks okay. And then I'm going to wait before I go down the middle and we'll go back to our boots. And we got a shade, but I got to figure out what the heck color I'm going to shade them with. It says brilliant purple, but I guess I'm using, I guess, I think I'm just going to use black plum. I think I have some black plum out here too. Um, and we're going to go, I'm just going to follow the pink char. So in these little areas here, you definitely need it to be darker. Inside the boot. Kiwi, you got a lot of feathers, Kiwi. That looks good. I kind of went on top of the shape, the highlighting a little bit. Because I'm kind of sitting back as I do this. Like if I weren't on camera, I'd have my head all up in there. Really. Um, no, I don't, I don't want to stick my head in the shot. I think black plum is working out just fine. Oh. Sorry, my watch face changed and it's... Okay, so I'm just following the picture. We're going to, everywhere we highlighted, we're going to do the opposite side of that. Let me come in so you can see. Hopefully I'll stay in the shot, but I can't. I'm moving up so that I'm like closer. Okay, I'm going to do it right here. And <clears throat> so basically, everywhere we, hi we highlighted... I'm going to shade the opposite. Oh, I wasn't in the shot. This is what happens, guys. Okay. I think I might need to move my um, camera a little bit closer. I'm so sorry. Because I keep... There we go. Now we're talking. Black plum. Corner load. And so, like right behind this float or wrinkle behind this one or in front of it. It's actually like back to back. And then I think. Feathers, feathers, feathers everywhere. Q. 
Kiwi, what do you think you're doing to me? I've had her for maybe like 15 years, Kay? I don't know. How long have I had you? And where else? We're going to go down the center. It looks like on this side of the boot. And it looks like I'm not going to go on the um, green. I bet you that's shaded with a different color like black green. I'm going to try and stop right there. All right, and then right here. Does that look separated? Yep. And wrinkly? Yep. I think I want to go, all right, let's go back down the middle of the legs with the sable brown. Oh man, I put way too much paint on my brush. Um, she has it going down this leg, which seems weird because it seems like this leg is in front of that leg, so I'm doing it that way. But then this boot is in front. Yeah, I gotta stay on the same side, Sarah. Stay on the same side. And I can see a real subtle tracing line back there. So the reason I erase the tracing lines is because once you've painted on top of it, you can't get them off. You know, they're under the paint, the graphite line. So it's just better to get them off before you um, get them off as best you can, just so that you know where you're going with the color, but you don't need to have the, um, <clears throat> the graphite lines. I want to do one more little part on the boot. No, I don't need it. And this looks weird right here. Let's see what it looks like in the... Well, they look good. Does she have it along the bottom? Yeah, I'm going to go along the bottom. I'm going to shade along the bottom. And... I think Joe fell asleep. I can hear him snoring in the back room. They've had, um, my husband works for the FAA and they're disinfecting all the equipment and they, he had to be on call last night to like make sure everything stays up and running because like they've never disinfected the equipment before and it's like all new, this whole, oh, I got to go up on top of the, this and that. So anyway, he's up all hours just constantly they have to monitor everything and um yeah that's his job he's very high up kind of thing in the um FAA so he takes naps when he can it's a lot you know some people have very I mean I just you gotta pray and give credit to all the doctors and nurses and everyone that's out there and Sherry too because Sherry's a truck driver bringing us our supplies all the Amazon people that are out there doing their jobs and then there's those of us who don't have jobs because they stopped it's gonna be interesting you guys but listen just for today oh and speaking of just for today we're gonna have um, of a video, not video conference, um, a phone meeting, like a phone conference call for my Al Anon meeting this week because we're not going to meet in person. We're going to, you know, do it via conference call. So that'll be new, different, you know. Um, but you got to do it. You got to get it in. Do whatever it takes to make you feel contented and this too shall pass, you guys. Don't think it won't. The stuff in history, it's happened all through history. There's different, you know, tragedies and na Mother Nature and viruses and whatever. And 
we will get through it and just try not to panic this helps me stay calm so much so they look like little boots what else uh, I want to put a little bit more over this on top of the boots here and then I think I'm going to highlight again I just want to darken this up for some reason you can go back as many times as you want once it's dry you gotta let each every time you do it you gotta let it dry and see how I pushed the color right into the water that's not a good look um, but anyway yeah if you don't feel like your first shot was was dark enough you can come back and just let it dry and darken it up see that was a dirty q-tip so I put I think I put like purple on the um the leg right here there's like a little purple but that looks good um I could come back and highlight so let's see uh highlight the boots deepen the shading slightly with royal purple base the band with celery green highlight down the band in the center with a brush mix of spicy mustard and celery green that's the same as we did up here and then shade with avocado and a little bit of black green but I'm just going to use black green straight black green let's do the highlight first so that was avocado no 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 it was um, spicy mustard and celery green wow that's different it's a different color from this that we highlighted I'm pretty sure I mean I could be wrong I'm brush mixing it so I wanted to rinse my brush so I don't just go in so heavy handed which is just what I do where are we highlighting lady I'm gonna highlight this side oh, that's not even showing up I, think I need a little more mustard or in my case I'm using antique gold and do that again I guess kind of like on top of both sides maybe a little bit in the middle that's good and then we're gonna just shade with black green I'm gonna let that dry for a minute so I think we're done that I'll come back to it in a minute because everything's pretty dry until everything's pretty dry um, wow we're on the beard guys we're moving to the beard I wonder why the bee scap so I did some of the shading on the bee scap already um, those of you that have the pattern you go ahead and do the shading just where the picture shows it just as I've been doing it and we're gonna move to the beard which is super fun um, paint in the same manner as the project above so it says uh, base the beard with slate gray thin a puddle of titanium paint and water and fl or flow medium this will help in pulling the long strokes for the beard using titanium white and a comb or rake brush begin to pull the lines on the beard in the direction that the hair would flow I build up my strokes in layers after the first layer let it dry before proceeding with another layer the last layer I use a fine liner brush and full titanium white and pull a few long random strokes and then we're going to shade the beard with slate gray so I'm going to do that I'm going to thin out some titanium white I'm just going to use this um, um, let me get my rake brush out did I already do it? no so I, ha I probably have a rake and a um, let's see what this is called this is called a comb one's called a comb oh here's another one I have a small one because sometimes it's helpful to get in oh I have another one and I do like using the so this is a flat version of a comb and this is um, a filbert version of a rake so these are both called filbert rakes and these are called well this doesn't even have a name but they're flats so the filbert is nice because I can 
I don't know. I like it. But I'm going to use the bigger one at first. I'm just going to go into water. And then I'm going to take my white. I'm going to, sorry, I'm all zoomed in still. And I'm just going to load, I'm going to make a, a little watery puddle here. Add a little more water. Okay. And you're really just working with the tips. And this might be too watery. Let's see what it looks like. And I'm just going to go in the direction that the beard would go. And if I get it on my B skep, that's okay. We're just starting. Now, this is a little tricky to get these. That wasn't that tricky, was it? I mean, that's it. That's all she has you do. I'm going to let that dry. Then we'll come back with like another layer, and then I'll use um, a liner brush to finish it off. I'm just going to take these off the B-skep. I just want to check and see if I finished the B scap. Let's see. Uh, Spice Spencer shade with terracotta. Deepen the shading with burnt sienna. Okay, float soft lines around the scap of the brush mix of. Yeah, I think I did. Like, if looking at the picture, it looks like I I did everything. Um, shade the left side of the opening. I did that. Deepen the shading with burnt sienna. Paint the void area at the top between the loop. So I actually have a cut cut out so that's done that was super simple there's really no highlighting on that so the B skeps done um, but let's see because uh, after this once we're done all that it's going to be the little details so the flowers and the bees something is missing down here I didn't do these buckles I don't know why let me look at there's, there's no buckles, um, legs and boots, so highlight the boots, shade the boots, base the bands around with celery green, highlight, see it doesn't have the buckle on here, I think I just winged it, I just figured it would be that, so I'm just going to do kind of like a little highlight and shade. I'm going to look at the picture. It looks like she probably used, I love burnt sienna. Is that one of the colors? Yay. Burnt sienna. Um, is that what we used for the B scap actually? The B scap terracotta. Shade the scap and then it, 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 we are going to deepen it with burnt sienna. So I'm just going to shade the buckle with um, a little bit of burnt sienna. And you know what? I got it. Little brush. And I'm just going to follow the picture. And it looks like it's just on the left side of the left one and the right side of the right one. And it'll start to make it look a little dimensional. I'm going to go there. And here. And then we got to go, um, we got to shade our little... I think it was black green, right? Yeah, black green. I think I have that out. No, I don't. I love black green. Black green is, I have black, oh, here it is. Nope. Black green is such a rich color. I did a, um, here it is. I did a uh, art journal page and I did like a landscape and it was like a fairy um, landscape, I think. I'm not sure. And I just remember using the black green to shade the, the field, like the hills and all that stuff. It's just lush. It's so great. Okay. So I'm going to use this to shade this little belt buckle band thing on his boots. boots. Okay, so I'm just going to go. You know what? We want to go inside here too. And along the outside. Same thing on this one, inside the belt buckle, see what I, I just am such a heavy hand, that's good, and then outside the belt buckle, I 
Um, right here. And I'll do the top and bottom as well. Uh, I think I'm going to do a little bit more on the buckle. Actually, she does not have that. She just has a little highlighting on the buckle. So where did she highlight it? Right over. Oh boy, this is a lot of white paint. I can tell. A little too much. I'm going to take it off. And remember, you got to let things have time to set up before you go on top of another thing because you'll pick up what you put down and it'll really make you mad. So that's why I skip around a lot. I'm going to go, I am going to put a little burnt sienna right here and right here and then I'll come back and highlight it. Um, the buckle I need to put the black green right. Um, you know what? She doesn't really have it on the on the top and bottom. It's not. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Maybe just on the bottom. And I'm just going to highlight it with like a liner. Um, a little line of like right here. I know I'm so far away, you guys, right now, but I think you get the gist. So I think my legs are done. I could highlight those again. I need a little more titanium. Oh, no, I have some. Just want to pop that a little more. Right down the middle and on the side. Oopsie. I fludged. I I got the dropsies. All right, we're going to go back to our beard, and I'm going to go with the smaller rake this time. Where did I put it? Right here. Just so that it looks different, and I'm going to try and make, um, I'm going to mix a little bit more color, like with the water. Like I'm going to make it a little thicker instead of waterier. Like that looks really watery, if you know what I'm saying. I'm going to add a little more. Yeah, this isn't quite a wash. I don't want it to be a wash. You just want it to be um, like, like line work. So I'm going to get, I'm going to load this. I don't think it's wet enough, but we'll see. Yeah, it's not wet enough. So when you're doing line work, the trick is to get the paint to flow off the brush like ink would flow out of a pen. So that you need water to do that. Why do I want to call this guy a troll? Because he's a gnome. He's not a troll. Oh, see that was a pretty one. Now it's starting to look good. A lot of the key to this type of painting is really in the tools. If you have the right tools, you'll be able to get the result you want. Oh, that's not working out. That's not, that looks crumbly. Uh-oh. I mean, it's okay. I'll fix it.
fix it with my liner brush, but I do I need more white. I think that looks pretty. I'm not going to get too crazy. Because she said to let it dry between coats and I haven't. I just went right back in there. But it looks beardy. It's starting to look more beardy. And then we're going to shade. Let me zoom in and show you. I mean it's not perfect. But it definitely looks beardy. And if you look at her picture. I think it looks... Now I'm going to take a liner brush and I'll make these little stray like flyaway ones, the little the ones that kind of stick out at the edge. Mm. Got this white paint. And just like gently. Oh boy. You see how heavy-handed I am? But I have to blend, like, I can't just have some white ones, kind of. I have to put them everywhere, kind of thing, you know, like, all along the edge. That looks good. So just here and there, let's see the top. I'm going to try and like make one go out like that. I don't want it to be too, like I have to not make a blop. She doesn't really have a lot going on over here because that would be the, the darker area because the B-skep is right there. It's going to cause a shadow on his cheek type thing. But I think we got it, guys. I don't want to get crazy, and that's the thing. If it's too fun, I definitely get a little crazy. I think that looks plenty good. Maybe right here in this little cranny. Right here. Oh boy. See how you can get crazy? It's cute enough. It's good enough. Okay, I'm stopping. Did I finish everything I wanted to do down here? I'm pretty sure I did. The legs are done. Okay. I think we're getting to the details now. Um, let's see. B-step, the B-step. I think I did it. Paint in the same manner, except instead of painting the streaks through the B-step, dot the B-step with terracotta. Oh. See these little dots? They're terracotta. I think I'll do that now. I'll probably be able to stay away from there. I'm just going to use my stylus and since I have some terra, I actually don't have the terracotta. I have burnt sienna and I think burnt sienna, hmm, I think I have, oh yes I do have terracotta. Terracotta. Um, how big do I want these? This is good. And I'm just going to follow her pattern. I mean, because I tend to overdo. So, oops. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see these. I might have base coated it with the terracotta. Oh, no, you can see them. Kiwi, why are you peeping? 
and I'm actually letting these have some dimension. I'm really doing a nice dip dot, not like a flat dot. There's a couple here by his hands. His hand. And here. I look good guys. I think that's plenty. I think it's plenty. You can't even see them really. They're just subtle. They're very subtle little things. Okay. So now I think we're going to be able to do flowers. Let's see. Oh, the nose and hands. Base the nose and hands with flesh tone. Highlight the top of the nose and hands with titanium white and shade the bottom of the nose with watermelon slice. Shade the hands with burnt sienna. Paint the thin lines on the right side of the nose with titanium white. Okay. So. I don't like to leave my brushes in the paint, so I'm going to, I'll be right back looking cute. Alright, so we need white. Oh, I never did do it. I got up and I never did take the uh, brushes out of the water. Uh, what I want to do, alright, let's do a little bit of this. I'm using Royal Fuchsia, but she has it as um, watermelon slice, and I'm going to put some right under this nose. On the bottom of the nose. Look how cute. I'll come in a little, guys. Sorry. Oh, I never shaded the beard, too. We have to shade the beard. And then I don't think... I think these are shaded with burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna. I say that every time, but it's like my favorite brown. It's a reddish brown. Right here. Boy, that's a lot. I'm just going to try to tickle it back or push it back a little. There we go. white. I'm going to highlight those things. Then they'll be done. I'm just going to let that dry a little bit. So we have to shade the beard. That is going to make it look really good. Um, So slate gray, that's another one of my favorite colors. For the beard, it says, I can't find it. I lost it, I lost it. Uh, shade the beard under the hat and be scap with slate gray. Um, under the hat, oh yeah, that's the hat, okay. Yeah, you don't usually think of a hat touching a beard. But when you're a gnome, evidently your hat touches your beard. 
it's light gray under the beard I don't know if this is going to be dark enough I may have to get some uh, there's another one I really like maybe she wants to keep it light like this but ooh under the nose That looks good. Yeah, so it's not really, um, it's kind of just covering up some of the white that's right up against and making it look behind the B skep more in a way, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's what it's doing. That is what I think. Oh my gosh, I put Kiwi back, and she's such a brat, like, she just wants to be with me all the time. It's just a lot. All right, I think that would be considered the shading on the beard. It doesn't look too much of a different color, but I think it's just perfect. Perfecto. The hands and nose are done. The beard is done so now I think let's see what's next the bees should we do the bees all right here we go bees where were you oh yeah you can opt to use a stencil for the larger bees on this project or you can paint them Base the bodies with spicy mustard, paint over the bodies again with cad yellow, and paint the tail, stripes, head antenna, and dot the antenna with lamp black. I am opting to paint the bees because I don't have a, a, I think she sells a um, stencil. So I'm just going to take this. Hopefully everything's dry enough. I think so. And I'm going to trace on, and maybe I'll use that white graphite that I had out here because um, it'll be lighter that way and I don't want it to be dark. So I just want a subtle line. I'll use this. And so what you want to do is get everything lined up. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Really, I'm just putting bees on, so I'm gonna line up the bee scap. That's, okay, this one's pretty good right here. But I don't think I even put him on. So I just have, there's only two bees on here. One, two. Right, yeah, okay. I don't know if this is gonna show up, but I'm gonna try it. And if it doesn't, I'll wing it. Let's see. Oopsie. I kind of wonkied it. All right, let's see if it showed up. Yeah, it showed up. Good enough. And then that one is there. All right. So it said to put paint them on with spicy mustard and then cad yellow, which I don't think I put out. Here. Ooh, that's going to make it really popping. All right, I think I have enough paint out. Um, like, even if your paint dries up on your palette, you can kind of open it up back up. So, like, there's a little here. See, it's dry under there. I mean, it's dry on top, but it's wet under there. That's what I mean. So, I am going to use this. I can always put some out, but you know, you don't need to. It's a round brush.
just trying to get him like rounded. Yeah, it's got he's got a hump back. It's all right. And I'm gonna take I'm just gonna make another just straighten him out a little bit. He's a lot less humpbacked. This one's got a humpty back tail. It's all right. And then she said the heads were black. Want to see what that looks like on the picture? Oh, it looks cute. Whenever you add black to a to a piece, it's great. All right. You know what else I want to do? I want to fix the pink. I'm going to get some bubble gum out. And I'm just going to make those um, flower centers really painted nice. Like this one got some purple on it and stuff. So I'm just going to fix that. Make it nice and clean. And then these. This one's not really even opaque. And... They look good actually. This one does. And this one. Just get them looking opaque. Then I need that uh, cad yellow. And I'm going to do another coat of on top of the B with cad yellow. So I ordered a um, macrame pattern from Amazon. It's an owl plant hanger. And I'm going to do it a couple times. And then I'll maybe I'll do a tutorial with you guys. Um, I think it was like $12 or something. And I mean, they haven't shipped it yet. That one's not showing up in my shipping thing yet. All right. While that's drying, the wings are just white, I think. Let's see. The bees. Uh, paint the tail stripes. Dot the antenna. Paint the wings with light buttermilk and highlight with titanium white. So I need light buttermilk. I think I got that out, didn't I? Yep. I'm just going to look at my tracing to see, or actually at the actual um, line drawing, because um, some of the bees on the other one had two wings. These just both have one wing. But on the bigger version, like the, the sign, it had, the bee had two wings. I just wanted to double check. And I'll still work with this brush. So here's the um, line drawing. So the wing kind of goes like a little teardrop right here. Got a rogue hair that messed me up. It's growing. I don't want it to grow. And then this wing. There. It's just a little teardrop shape. And I really don't want it to grow. I like that right there. Stop. That one grew on me. I'm going to have to go get her. And then I want to see the flowers. Base the center with bubblegum pink. Shade around the edges. Deepen the shading and highlight the top with titanium white. Dot the top. Yeah, yeah. Base the petals with titanium white. I want to just put another coat on each of these petals because they're so, um, they're washed out and I don't like it. So I'm basing them. Even though she has us finishing the 
centers before we do this. I think I just wanted to do it a little bit. Kiwi hears me talking and then she has to be in here with me. It's like seriously, she is my boss, right? Aren't your pets the boss of you? I mean, I could, I think I am going to do the little side. See how it has a dimensional thing there? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to make the flower right there. I think that'll look cute. But then I'd have to, go, I have to go around the whole thing, don't I? Huh? Maybe not. Maybe just the flower. But yeah, like the pink. I kind of forgot to do that. On my Christmas ornaments, I always do that. I always go around the side. Mm, oh, I think I can do these ones too. See, once you start to add this stuff, it just comes together. And it just gets you excited. I always couldn't wait to get the details on. And some people probably hate the details because they're small. But I just think it like kind of brings the piece to life. That's the way I see it. And then there's one here. And having the right brushes is going to help you when it comes to the details. Like, I have a little point on this brush that I'm actually I'm managing pretty well to get it to stay the shape I want it to. It's not growing too bad. And do thin coats, guys. Just do like a couple thin coats instead of um, glopping it on there, you know. You have more control when you do it with um, a couple thin coats instead of thick, gloppy, one thick. Turn your piece. That's a huge thing I do, constantly turning my piece to make sure that you can pull your strokes in the right direction. Whatever. See, I had too much on my brush. See, it looks messy at first. But don't worry. And I assume we're going to be shading these little petals, believe it or not. So there's one, two, three. Then I believe these are um, a little pink. Yeah. So see, she's got these little pink buds, like little tulip buds. So one, two, three. Oh, yep. That and this. So those are the only daisy-like type flowers. I'll do a little bit more. Oh, that's white. Dang it. Because this was light ivory. But she might have put white on top of it. I think she might have. Let's see. Alright, so that's cool. See, I just wanted to get, like, see them and make them come, you know. Alright, 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 alright. Back to the bees. You can opt to use a stencil, but we're going to do paint the tail stripes and head with, with a dots of light black and highlight the top of the wing with titanium white. So I already kinda, all right, so let's do the black. I have black somewhere around here. <coughs> <coughs> Every time I have a dry cough, I think I have um, coronavirus. It's just weird. I don't really think I have it, but I, it reminds me, oh, coronavirus, every time I have a dry cough. I don't know where my black is. Be right back. Oh, traditional, I'll be right back. <laughs> 